Today we're going to be looking at some sports in the Olympics and Paralympics that are heavily influenced by the power of mathematics. Let's dive straight into it. Okay, so we're going to first start by looking at one of the controversies in the Paris 2024 Olympic and Paralympic Games, and that is the size of the swimming pool, which you might think sounds crazy, but there's actually a lot of mathematics behind how the size of a swimming pool can affect swimmers' performances. What should have been the stage for many Olympic and world records is now being criticised for being too slow. At every Olympic Games, athletes train for years, hoping to reach their peak performance and maybe even set a new world record. The Summer Olympics in Tokyo 2021 saw six new world records in swimming alone. But fast forward to this year and the Paris Olympics, and it's a completely different story. Some athletes and experts are actually pointing their fingers at the pool itself, saying it's not deep enough, and that is the reason why the times have been slower. The Paris La Defense Arena is actually a converted rugby stadium, temporarily turned into an indoor swimming pool for the Games, and the pool is 2.15 metres deep which is actually below the recommended three meters for a competitive swimming pool. Now, this might not sound like a huge deal to you, but it actually is. The depth of a swimming pool can significantly affect a swimmer's performance. When swimmers dive into the water, they create waves. You've probably seen this yourself when jumping into a pool. And what happens is in a deeper pool, these waves can be absorbed and dampened by the water. So this overall reduces the turbulence on the surface. But when you have a shallower pool, the waves can reflect at the bottom and that in turn creates currents and turbulences that can slow the swimmers down. You can kind of think of it like this. A shallow pool acts kind of like a bathtub. When you're sat in a bathtub and you splash around, you can see the water goes crazy. But if you go into a swimming pool and you did the same motion, the whole swimming pool would not be affected unlike the bathtub. And that's why deeper pools are generally seen as faster and better for setting world records. Now, we can't 100% say for certain that the depth of the swimming pool is affecting the swimmer's times. It's a lot more complicated than that. And if you've watched my channel before, you'll know that I specialised in fluid dynamics. And one of the big things in fluid dynamics is the Navier-Stokes equations. Now, these equations themselves essentially describe fluid flow. So it can be fluid in an ocean, in a swimming pool, in a cup of tea, honey that you pour on your waffles or something like that. And they are so incredibly complicated. I created a video on the seven millennial prize problems, which are unsolved problems in mathematics that if solved will earn you one million dollars. And one of the problems in those millennial prize problems is the Navier-Stokes existence and smoothness problem. And again, like I said, the Navier-Stokes equations describe fluid flow. And as you guessed it, a swimming pool is tied to these equations and they are incredibly complex. So the design of a swimming pool extends much further than just saying whether it's shallow or deep. So is the Paris 2024 pool really to blame for the lack of world records? Maybe, maybe not. It's quite a complicated issue and it's one that we probably won't be able to say for certain until after the games when experts can analyse the data in more detail. Now, talking about analysing data, we're moving on to the second part of this video, which is on digital twins and how they were used in the Olympic Games to win gold. First, we need some context. Dr. Ken Ono is a mathematics professor at the University of Virginia and his journey into the world of competitive swimming started in rather an unexpected way. In a twist of fate, Ono bumped into a group of Norwegian scientists who were using accelerometers, tiny sensors that track movement, to analyse the technique of cross-country skiers. And Ono came up with the brilliant idea, what if we could apply this technology to swimming? This itself led to a groundbreaking project where Ono and his students started to collect swimming data in order to improve the overall technique and ability of swimmers. One of his students, Andrew Wilson, went from a division three walk-on swimmer to an NCAA champion and eventually a 2021 Olympian. And this was all thanks to the data they collected and analyzed. Now, Ken Ono started his journey at Emory University in Atlanta, but in 2019, he moved to the University of Virginia and started working with the women's team there, including Kate Douglas, who is now a gold medalist Olympian. 
So how does this mathematics actually help swimmers? Now I'm going to be doing a separate video on the deep dive of all of the equations that go into these accelerometers and how they're able to create these digital twins to help improve swimmers performance. So subscribe so you don't miss out on that. But in today's video, I'm going to be giving a generic overview of how this maths was used to improve swimmers performances. So these accelerometers basically break down every single element of their swim. So every pull, every kick, even the angle of their heads. And what they did was they analysed this data and made tiny adjustments that essentially shaved off very precious fractions of seconds from the swimmer's times, which obviously in competitive sports, fractions of seconds is the difference between winning and losing a race. As an example, which I'll be explaining in much more detail in the upcoming video, but they changed Kate's head position and that in itself saved 0.44 seconds. Like I said, that might not sound like a lot, but in the world of competitive sports, it's a lot. And in the Paris 2024 Olympic Games, we saw Kate take a gold medal in her swimming race. Now this victory came obviously as a result of a lot of raw talent, but mathematics as well. And that's why I find it so cool in these Olympic and Paralympic Games is seeing where mathematics crops up and how it can be used to actually improve athletes' performances. And um, yeah, I just find it so cool as a math nerd myself. Now, Kate Douglas's story is a powerful reminder that success in sports isn't just all about physical ability. It's about innovation, collaboration, and a willingness to explore new frontiers, even if that means diving into the very deep ends of mathematics. Now to finish this video off, I'm gonna cover a very brief topic for topic number three, and that is the 100 meters men's final. If you saw the race yourself, you'll have seen that Lyles beat Thompson by the tiniest margin. But what I find really, really interesting about this is that essentially in old Olympic games, when running races started, so to signify that a running race had started, you know, the go, they would shoot the gun in the air and that would make a sound and then you'd you'd set off running. But what they did at the Olympic Games now is they put speakers behind each of the lanes. And the reason for that is because it takes time longer to travel to the outside lane than the inside lane. If we had the old fashioned way of just one person stood and shooting the gun, the time it would take to get to Thompson and then to Lyles, Thompson was in lane four and Lyles was in lane seven, that time itself, it would take 0.008 seconds to travel from Thompson to Lyles. And if that was the case, Thompson would have won the 100 meters, which I just find crazy. It's tiny, the tiniest fractions that matter in Olympic sports. And I find it cool that maths and physics play a huge role in that. So as I said, I'm gonna be doing some separate videos, diving into a lot of the equations around certain areas in sports, javelin throwing, swimming again, like I mentioned. Comment down below if you wanna see anything specific because I just find it so cool that maths crops up in literally everyday life. So that was the video today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.